Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Tom Spark. Welcome back to another review. Today we're going to be rechecking out Private Internet Access for 2021. They've gone through some changes, been bought out and stuff like that. So we're going to be reevaluating them to help you decide if it should be worth using, if you should buy it or not. Now guys, why should you trust me? Well, I've done more reviews than anyone on YouTube so far. I've done over 64 plus VPN reviews already, and I've been doing this for around five years. You can check out all my reviews on vpntierless.com. Fully transparent, never sponsored, objective VPN reviews. So let's go ahead and check out Private Internet Access. Now guys, if you haven't already, go ahead and check out vpntierless.com. This is kind of like the central hub of the channel, where I list out all the resources for you guys to help you pick the best VPN service. Anyways guys, back to the video. One more thing, if you guys want to help support the channel, make sure to click on some of the links in the description or the comment down below. Now what about the pricing from Private Internet Access? You know, how does it do in terms of pricing? Well, it's kind of interesting because Private Internet Access has kind of shifted and changed things. I think some of this has been the influence from CAPE. Um, back in the day, private internet access used to be like by far the cheapest VPN. It was $6.95 a month around there, $39 per year, and maybe even like $15 to $20 for like six months. It was an insanely good deal. Nowadays, they've kind of changed things around a little bit. It's more focused on the traditional popularized VPN model, stuff like Surfshark, NordVPN, CyberGhost, which is owned by CAPE. And those kind of VPNs use this more emphasis model to get you to buy three years, make the one month so expensive, you don't really wanna buy it. You are instead going for three years because it's cheaper, way cheaper per month. You know, that's how they kind of wrote people in. I'm not a huge fan of this push to long-term commitments when the one month is not affordable. I just think private internet access's old model was pretty much better in every single way. It still does have 10 simultaneous connections, which is okay. And it includes things like the BitTorrent proxy, which some VPNs don't. So it's not the worst model in the world, especially since one year is such a good price, but still, I still think it's a downgrade from what it used to be for sure. So what about private internet access's application? Is it good? And I would have to say to that, yes, this is one of the best applications out there. I think private internet access has always had one of the best applications. It's always kind of gone toe to toe with TorGuard in terms of customization and options. And in 2021, um, it's still a really good application and they've made a lot of good improvements. Namely, one thing is that it's no longer attached to the dashboard, which I like. Options are nice to have, right? They provide a lot of different um, tray icons, theme customization, but the really cool stuff here is the features and stuff like that. It has ad blocking, kill switches, DNS customization, split tunneling, port forwarding, um, WireGuard support. I would have liked to see Ike V2, not available though. Proxy support, they give you BitTorrent proxy as well, and dedicated IP integration. However, besides all those things, look at the interface itself, really nice. Gives you tons of information, usage settings, quick settings to configure, a VPN snooze setting. Um, you can look at the servers and get information about the ping. You could favorite the servers. Honestly, guys, I'm gonna show you the application analysis here and you're gonna see what I mean. Private Internet Access, I think, has really done a good job in terms of application. Good job to the engineers, the people who developed it. I know some of the people who did, and they tell me that they're still proud of the work they did to this day. And I have to say, I agree with them. Look at this. For being um, compared to some other options out there, it really does nail almost everything. The only thing it doesn't have is very nitpicky script support, which hardly any VPN does. And it doesn't have Ike V2 support, which isn't a big deal nowadays since WireGuard is pretty much better in every way. So they pretty much nail everything. Not only that, but they have zero Android trackers, only eight permissions, which is less than most of the ones this year, and only one tracker on the website, which is Cloudflare, which is still better than a lot of VPNs as well. So overall, Private Internet Access has an exceedingly strong application, probably one of the best ones out there. Um, no questions asked. Really good job here, guys. All right, guys, so we're going to be starting the download with Private Internet Access's um, WireGuard protocol. That should give us the best speeds. We're going to be looking down here, and lo and behold, those are the speeds that I'm expecting with a WireGuard VPN in 2021. Going up to 60 is very, very good. You know, some of these speeds are getting so good that I might have to start kind of re-looking at what I would consider 5 out of 5. You know, before 2020, this would be like six out of five. Nowadays, we're seeing so many good WireGuard supported VPNs reaching 40 to 70 range. This is looking very consistent, very good as well. Um, so very good speeds here from private internet access for sure.
So next we have the privacy policy of private internet access and the reputation. You know, is this a trusted VPN provider? Well, in terms of like the logs and stuff like that, you probably don't have anything to worry about. There's been a couple times where private internet access has been tested and proven not to be collecting logs. The main concern with private internet access that people have nowadays is the acquisition um, from the huge giant CyberGhost owned by a company named Cape. Now, a lot of people are talking about this and it's kind of been an issue since this acquisition. Even recently, a lot of the owners of PIA and the people who had shares have given over more control and pretty much CyberGhost slash Cape is in full control now of private internet access. And the company has changed in some ways, which I'll be like, I have mentioned in this review already and we'll probably be talking about more um, throughout the lifetime of this product. Um, but the main concern kind of with Cape owning private internet access, you know, if you don't know anything about Cape, well, this article on Cena actually has a pretty good um, write up about it. Um, so Crossrider is like the company uh, Cape, it kind of like rebranded. Um, the company Crossrider or now Cape was founded by um, an ex-Israeli surveillance agent and a billionaire um, who was previously convicted of insider trading who was also named in the Panama Papers, which is kind of like a collection of documents and stuff like that outlining how companies were using offshore locations um, to kind of get away with paying less taxes or laundering money and whatnot. Um, so Crossrider had previously produced a software which allowed third-party developers to hijack user browser data via malware injection, redirect traffic to advertisers, and slurp up private data. Um, it was a really successful company, and the company itself has kind of tried to get away from that persona or kind of write up some things saying that some of that stuff's not true or whatever. But this is kind of what people say about the company, and a lot of times this kind of stuff is true. Um, there's also even studies like in 2015, um, which Google and UC Berkeley um, compiled about the company. Apparently, CyberGhost had even blogged about it on the site, um, which is still available at this web archive link we'll look at. CyberGhost CEO Robert Knapp even noted that while CyberGhost focused on privacy and security from day one, Crossrider started out as a company that distributed browser extension and developed ad tech products, quite the opposite of what we did. Um, so the company has kind of even admitted, you know, what it used to do, and it is trying to turn around into a cybersecurity niche. However, even through this turnaround in the same year, Cape still operated the infamous Scareware Re-Image, a potentially unwanted program that positions itself as a computer performance enhancer, but has been known to signal false positives. So, you know, there's all sorts of like stuff going on uh, with the previous owners and, you know, what they did and whatnot. And it just... It, it, it sours reputation, it does. Um, it's kind of unfortunate. You know, you might be wondering, you know, why did private internet access sell to CyberGhost? Well, the company had a ton of debt, apparently $32 million of debt, which is insane. Um, I've talked to some people behind the scenes, you know, who used to be part of the company, and apparently they think, you know, one reason it got sold is just because private internet access and the owners themselves were mismanaging the product and that management wasn't really fit to run this company. And that's probably why it had so much debt as well. Although the company itself did have a decent product in a lot of ways. Another thing about private internet access is that it did kind of make some weird decisions. Um, like for example, two years ago, they just completely like archived and paused the forums on their website, which actually did have a pretty vibrant community. And then they just, for some reason, decided to move everything to Reddit which isn't necessarily known for being privacy friendly or anything like that. I mean, sure, it seems decently active still. Um, the support may be not so much active here, um, but you know, why move a already established good community with a website that probably doesn't have trackers and collect anything about you to a community like this one, you know, which does have a good format and Reddit and everything like that, but it's still not really privacy friendly. And I don't think this was a really good decision. And it's still something that I'm annoyed about to this day that the forums got closed. I think some of the VPNs that have forums, AirVPN, TorGuard, they have some really good communities there. Um, and you don't always have to be having everything on Reddit, which is a website that has huge investments from China and pretty much collects everything about you. So that's kind of my take on that as well. Cool thing about private internet access is they do have decent support. They have live chat agents you could talk to, um, a decent sized knowledge base, and pretty good response times from tickets. The support has kind of wavered here and there throughout the years, but it's still decent support, I would say, for a VPN provider. One of my complaints with private internet access is that Netflix availability has always been very spotty. For some reason, it won't even let me connect to the website, which is definitely disappointing. 
I've tried reloading the website, um, refreshing the cache, and nothing seems to be working, so that's just too bad. Strangely enough, I did restart my computer and just kind of open and close my browser a couple times, and now it is working with private internet access. Let's double check and look up the Twilight Zone. If we can see that, it means we are unblocking. Okay, so there it is. We are unblocking the USA version of Netflix with private internet access, which is good to see. I would have just liked a little bit more um, easy startup. I don't know why it was having errors launching the website and stuff like that. So let, let me know down in the comments down below if you experience a similar thing. Another thing that I've noticed is that for some reason, private internet access is loading these websites really, really slowly. So maybe they have some kind of smart DNS thing or some kind of IPs that are rotating for streaming services. Whatever the reason here, it's just loading so slowly. I mean, look at that. You can see uh, perhaps that was some of the issue with Netflix as well. Um, let's go ahead and see if it works um, with um, PIA. Um, looks like it should be working, um, and it does, so at least it works. It's just kind of slow and annoying to work. So I can't get Hulu to work. It's giving me some kind of error as well. So uh, this has just been a real pain in the ass to test, let me tell you. And a BBC iPlayer does not work, even though I'm using a UK IP with PIA. So yeah, yakers. All right, guys, in conclusion, the final score for private internet access is a 3.5 out of 5, making it a pretty strong tier 2 option. Now, private internet access does kind of have some changes made to it from Cape, and they've kind of had a rocky company history, as well as a reputation that is substantially hindered by the company that now owns it due to their own history. As a whole, though, private internet access, since it's been around, it's a decent option for a lot of people. It doesn't collect logs. Speeds can be really good for downloads, although a little bit shaky here for streaming. Streaming itself is very shaky as well, with a good amount of services not really being supported. And the ones that are supported do kind of require some finagling, either refreshing browser, shutting down browsers, restarting, kind of configuring things on your end to get it working. However, it can work. Support's fine, nothing too special, but it does have live chat, a decent knowledge base, and good response times you know, that are pretty standard for a VPN. The application itself, I think is the star of the show, probably one of the best, if not the best applications out there. Just so many options, a good layout, um, pretty much everything about it is as close to perfect as you can get. Um, I just really like the application and I think it's really the star of the show. Unfortunately though, it's not as good as a tier one VPN. It's just as a whole, as an aggregate product, it's not as strong as some of the tier one options out there. I would really encourage you guys to check out TorGuard if you like the application from private internet access. TorGuard is probably one of the few out there that can compete in terms of the application strength. Um, and it also is better in terms of streaming, support, reputation. Um, it's cheaper as well. So there's that. Also other options on tier one can work as well. So anyways, guys, thanks for checking out this private internet access review in 2021. And I'll see you again in the next one very soon.